All right, guys, this is the first video after taking delivery of the 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. I'm just doing a quick drive. I want to pull over because a lot of you guys have been commenting. You want to see the spec, and it's a nice sunny day. I kind of just gave the car a quick little uh, quick detailer, and I want to show you guys. I'm going to grab the window sticker, and I'm going to talk to you about it. But so far, the car feels absolutely outstanding. And the one thing I'll talk about, the more I drive it, is that the suspension tuning is way different than the earlier cars in a good way. And also, Jerry noticed when we opened up the door, the tire pressure rating is different than the 17 to 19 cars, which obviously means that they recalibrated and changed the spring rates or whatever they did. But this thing feels absolutely awesome out of the box. And uh, I'm super, super happy. I actually feel at home now. I got my seats back, my favorite seats. And uh, I'm going to pull over and I'm going to show you guys the spec. It is probably the, it is probably the most expensive uh, 23 QV you could get because it's got, it actually has an option on the car that I didn't even know about until I looked at the window sticker. And it's one of those like active lane assist options where it'll vibrate the steering wheel when you cross over into another lane. But when you put it into race mode, which is the mode I primarily drive in, it kind of defeats all of that stuff. But uh, I'm going to pull over quick. We'll show you guys the car, the options, the features, the new color spec, and then we'll talk some more about it. And then I'll go also on a little bit of a drive on some back roads and I'll uh, conclude the video. This is the very first video of the 23 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. There's going to be a lot more to come and I'll explain to you because I was supposed to be going on a road trip this week for 10 days. And I planned on vlogging it all with the new car, but unfortunately, something has come up and is preventing me from doing that. And I'll discuss that more in an updated video, but I'm not going to disclose exactly why and what caused this delay. But uh, we'll pull over right now. We'll talk about the spec in a couple of moments. So check out the new 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio in Rosa Etna. Exposed carbon fiber roof. It's got the gunmetal five hole wheels because that's the only wheels that they had available for the last two years. They did away with the Technicos. Technicos are coming back for 2024. But I got the car in the sun right now and you could just see the color. It is absolutely incredible. Um, it looks literally like a candy apple red. Um, the metallic, the glow, and it's very, very different than Rosso Competizione. And we're, I'm actually going to do a video with Jerry's 2018 Rosso Competition car. We're gonna put them side by side and we'll make a good compilation video showing you how different these colors are. But uh, if you guys aren't familiar, this color was introduced in 2020 when Alfa Romeo unveiled the GTA and GTA M model. And like I said, I never really saw it in person. And every single time that I saw this color on a car it was usually the car was dirty and it wasn't detailed. And it was also on a cloudy day. So it was always hard for me to say, hey, this was the color I wanted. Uh, but then I started looking at more photos. I had a local customer that's got one and I'm looking at some photos he sent me. And you know, like sometimes the cameras could kind of like tweak the colors, especially reds and greens. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I don't know if I'm gonna love it. Is it gonna look too maroon? Is it gonna look too orange? Now that I have it, this is the absolute perfect spec I could have ever asked for. I'm super happy with it. And I'm actually kind of glad that the Alfa Rosso one that I was actually gonna buy got sold because I think this is more unique. Uh, I think it shows off the lines a little bit better and I think the metallic colors on the QV just make the car look a little bit more uh, classier and more higher end. All right guys, I moved the car just so you can kind of see the profile a little bit. And like I said, I really definitely did miss this car, primarily based on the size. When you look at the car compared to like the G80 M3, it's a lot smaller, much smaller door. Um, it's just a sexier car by design. And that's just really what I missed about the G80. G80 was, like I said, it was just a temporary holdover car. I do not miss that car at all. It's a phenomenal car, well-engineered, exceptionally built uh, with the highest quality as far as the paint finish, fit and finish, body panels, all that. But uh, the car was almost a little bit too good. And when a car is too good or when anything in life is too good, it really doesn't have a lot of soul or personality. And I'm all, all about the emotion and the personality of things that I own. And I also like to have stuff that, you know, you don't see 10 of them on the road every day. And I was looking at those G80s and I'm seeing them all day, every day. Whereas a QV, you very, very rarely see. But just want to highlight this color in the direct sun. I mean, the car is not detailed. It's kind of pretty messed up. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but you could just see the shimmer and the glow. And I, like I said, I really think the metallic colors on this shape really, really emphasize the curves 
and it almost adds a little bit more of a higher end luxury feel to it versus like a solid color. Uh, the only solid color I guess they offer right now is pretty much Alfa Rosso. Uh, most of the colors in the colorways are metallics. But you can see it here. Now this car does not have the carbon fiber package that my 21 did. So it does not have the carbon fiber grill and it does not have the carbon fiber mirrors, but I already have the Koshi carbon fiber uh, GTA mirrors. I did a test fit on those the other day. If you check my Instagram, you'll see them. Uh, and it does not have the narrow deck lid badge because like I said, they're doing some weird stuff right now with options. That badge is coming off and I'll shoot a video on that as well. Um, but other than that, like I said, the car is a beauty. Now, granted, the technical wheels are a better wheel, a forged wheel, lighter weight and all of that. These are the traditional five hole wheels, which are cast. Uh, I don't think they look bad, but I'm already exploring options of doing a custom wheel. Uh, the wheel and tire package is identical, brake system, everything's identical, but I'll tell you right now, the suspension tuning, spring rates and shock tuning feels incredible. Uh, this actually feels right now out of the box better than my 2018 did with the KW DDC coilover kit. Another thing I wanna emphasize, I think I mentioned it while I was driving up here, is when you look in the driver's side door, the tire pressure rating now is different than the 2017 to 2019. Why would you change tire pressure? The only reason you would do that is you, if you fully recalibrated the suspension settings and that's pretty much what it is. Uh, this particular car, I also prefer it that it doesn't have the red here and it doesn't have the red on the bottom of the dash. For some reason, I just never really loved that. And now this car is red and it's so vibrant. I mean, look at the color. Absolutely incredible shimmer. Um, I like having the all black interior and I like just the subtle detail of the green and white stitching that's just on the seats, the armrest, also on the back seats as well. I'll show you guys that. So you get the stitching here, you know, with the deviated color. Also, this seat is fold down. You still have the Alcantara. Now you cannot get the Alcantara unless you get the Sparco seats. Uh, that's just something that Alfa Romeo is doing for the United States. I don't know about outside the United States, but it's just one of those things that definitely annoys me how they're doing these option packages. But these are one of my favorite seats I've ever owned in my life. And for me to, you know, miss them that much, considering the torture I was enduring for 10 months with the BMW, it just tells you something. And like I said, if you're not comfortable in the car that you're driving every day, it does not make sense to have that car and you're never going to want to drive that car. And that's the way the BMW became uh, a nuisance for me. Now on the doors, you get black stitching. So you're not getting the deviated stitching and it's all black. It's, it's a very clean look, kind of similar to my Stelvio, my 23 Stelvio Veloce, whereas we have just the red seats, but the rest of the interior is all black. And I actually think it, it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. Uh, my M3 was kind of like that too. I had the orange seats and then the rest of the interior was black. But at least when I get into this car, it actually smells like I'm in a leather interior because you have fully wrapped leather on the top of the dash and doors and everything else. It's nicely done in Ferrari, narrow, black Napa grade leather. Steering wheel is also the upgraded steering wheel. You got the little Quadrifoglio badge right here. Everything is kind of the same that was updated in 2020. Uh, and a lot of people just say, oh, you should have waited for the 2024. I'm gonna be honest with you. That LCD instrumentation does not add any value to my life and Italians and LCDs and high tech just doesn't work. So if they can't even get the basic stuff right in a car, I didn't want to mess with an LCD screen going blanked out and having issues with this getting replaced. I wanted analog gauges, especially after I hated the BMW G80 M3 so much uh, with the gauges. Also, now as far as the front headlights, you know, it's also a thing now. I do think the 24 lights are pretty cool. now. Is it a deal breaker that I didn't buy a 24? Absolutely not. Why? Because I was a little skeptical about the LCD uh, dashboard. I'm also not a fan why they switched the electronic differential to a mechanical differential. Now, my personal opinion, I think they did it to cost cut. Uh, I don't think it's gonna add any benefit because the electronic diff on these cars or any of these high performance cars, it's tuned with the suspension, the, uh, the ABS system, all the computers in the car are tuned with that E-diff, also with the power delivery and everything else. Now, I didn't get a chance to drive the 21 in the snow or rain too much, but on my 18, the E-diff was far from perfect, but it could have just been an early car uh, in terms of like the programming. Now, so if you look at the lights here, these are the traditional lights. They still look good. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, this is what really confused me with the newer 24s, and you guys could watch videos on it they have like the three LED little rings that go inside the headlight. Now, if you go back historically with Alfa Romeo and their design, I don't see anything historically in their design 
you know, elements that symbolized anything in threes. That's a Maserati thing. Pay attention to what Maserati's doing on the Gran Turismo, on the MC20, on the Gracali. They're doing the threes in the headlights. They're doing it on the wheels. They're doing it on the portholes in the fenders. They're doing it on the back window cutouts. Everything in the Maserati, they're doing threes because Maserati is the symbol of the trident, okay? So that was the thing where I, didn't, I started thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I don't think I need these new lights and I don't think I need the, uh, the LCD screen. It just didn't make sense to wait you know, several more months to get that car because the depreciation of the M3 might have been worse. Car market is changing every week. I said, I got really good money for the, the G80. He says, let me sell it and get it out of my life now. Enjoy the 23. And like I said, maybe in the future, I'll do a retrofit of the headlights. I could also do a retrofit of the LCD screen. There's a couple of guys that I follow on Instagram. Uh, one's in Italy and one's somewhere else in Europe where you could kind of retrofit and program it. I'm not going to explore that right now. I don't want to have this car turn into an absolute electronic nightmare, so I'm going to enjoy it as it is. Uh, the first odds, mods we're going to do, definitely going to be lowering it. I'm going to put some auto fanatic spacers. I'm going to do the resonator delete kit. Uh, when all the other parts, I got a bunch of carbon coming for the interior. When that stuff drops from Koshi uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably do a video. I'll show you guys another uh, technique that I'm going to use uh, to install it, just because when I installed everything on the black car, and I was selling the car back to Alfa Romeo, and then I put everything back to stock, and then I was selling it privately, it became an absolute nightmare to pull that stuff off the way I did it with the dual mix 3M auto body mix epoxy. So I got a new method I'm going to show you guys. Also going to be doing some paint protection film on the front bumper, on the hood, and on the rocker panels, uh, possibly in a couple of weeks. But like I mentioned, as I was driving up here to shoot this little video today, uh, I was supposed to be going on a road trip taking this new car. That was another reason why I bought the new car and I kind of timed it exactly the way I timed it. I was supposed to go on a road trip leaving tomorrow, uh, going down south. I had to go look at some real estate and some other potential business opportunities. And I was going to be taking this car through Nashville, Tennessee, into Georgia, into the Carolinas, up into the mountains, and I was going to vlog the whole thing. Unfortunately, something catastrophic has happened that I cannot take this car on that trip right now. Hopefully I could resume those plans to do that vlog and do that road trip and actually really enjoy this car in the mountains and on perfectly good roads that are not in New York and I'll shoot some content for you guys as well. But other than that, this is just the first video on the 23 QV. Absolutely love it. Um, I don't regret getting a third one. Maybe I'll get a fourth one, who the hell knows? But um, no, I love the car. I love the size. I feel at home in it. I love the seats. I love that you get in it, you push the start button and you go. It's got the right sound. It's got the right profile. It's got the right looks. Everything about this car just works. Uh, FYI, for anybody that's ordering these cars with the carbon roof, be forewarned, that the weave absolutely sucks. Um, this is not a German car, this is not an exotic car in terms of like making the weave perfect. Just to let you guys know, there's a lot of flaws in that weave. Uh, and like I said, it's not built like a BMW. So the now the other car that I was really considering getting, and I posted it on my YouTube and Instagram several times, was the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. There's several reasons why I didn't buy that car. The only thing that I was really pushing to buy that car was the manual transmission, because it had a good Tremec manual. And I hated the manual in the M3 for so long, I wanted to kind of like redeem myself with a better manual. But I said to myself, you know what? There's too many other things about that car that turned me off. And I said, if I really want to go with another manual, I might as well just step up and go get a Porsche GT car, whether a GT3 Touring or a Porsche GTS. And I'll probably save that in the future. And that's probably what's going to replace this car. I'm not going to keep this car forever, maybe a year, two years, I don't know. But I would like to transition from this car once I'm no longer living in this area into a possible 911 or you know GT3 or a GTS, but we'll see what happens when time permits. I'm gonna be changing a lot of stuff around my lifestyle and with cars because um, I don't know, I just don't need all of these cars anymore. So that's pretty much my rationalization as far as why I didn't get the CT4 V Blackwing. And I'm gonna post a specific video outlining several reasons why I did not buy that car. And number one, I'll tell you right now, just a little hint, was the price was exactly the same as this, okay? Just take that with a grain of salt. The price was exactly the same as this. Now, I didn't buy this at full MSRP. I got a little bit of a discount, not much. Um, but the price of this was exactly the same as the Cadillac. And when you weigh all the options and you look at the sum of the parts, I just couldn't justify doing it uh, you know, for that price. So let me grab the window sticker. I'll show you guys exactly what we got in this car. I mean, it's pretty much loaded to the gills. This is the most loaded, I think, QV you could get right now. So, I mean, this red is just freaking awesome. All right, so here we go. Here's the window sticker. Starting price, base price is 79760 
and it gives you all the BS. It's got a little touch screen that doesn't add any value to my life. I could care less about that. Uh, the only thing that I dislike is that when you start up these all new alphas, it starts up in end mode, and I just don't really love that. So optional equipment, the Rosa Etna metallic paint was $1,750. The Sparco race seats were $3,500. I believe they were $3,200 a uh, number of years ago. That went up in price. Now, this is what my car has that I didn't know it had is the Quadrifoglio rear wheel drive package 25P. I don't really think you need this. Uh, it's got some active assist plus package. Now, I like the forward collision and I like the blind spot monitor, but I don't like that it shakes the steering wheel uh, when you're swerving in and out of lanes, when you're driving fast, but you can turn that off and you also, when you're in race mode, it defeats it. So that package was $15.95. So for anybody considering one of these, unless you really need this, this is not gonna save you money on insurance, FYI. I would delete this off because I don't think you need to spend the 1600 bucks on that. Uh, the exposed carbon fiber roof, take that with a grain of salt, it's $2,500. And I'm gonna be honest with you, since the carbon fiber weave is not perfect, you may or may wanna consider uh, not getting that or possibly doing a very high-end uh, vinyl wrap in carbon fiber. Maybe that'll uh, justify somebody that wants to get it and just doesn't wanna spend the money. And also it's got gloss red calipers with white script. These are primarily done in Alfa Rosso. So the total MSRP on my car is $91,000. $450. So it's a pretty expensive car. Now my 2018, I believe that car was about 84,000. So this car is a hell of a lot more money. The paint was a little bit more money, the exposed roof and the Sparco seats cost a little bit more money. And it's, and, and it's got that active assist package that I didn't really need, but it came with the car. So that's it guys. This is the, uh, the first video introducing the new QV to the channel. Stay tuned. There's going to be more content. And like I said, if everything works out in the next couple of weeks, hopefully I could do that road trip and vlogs driving this thing down south into the Blue, Blue Ridge Mountains and into the country and get some really, really good content for you guys. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one soon.